You may be seated and welcome on this first Sunday in November with the time change. Everybody got to sleep in this morning. It was good. If you could sign the attendance pads and pass them down, that would be great. If you write 9 o'clock at the top, that helps the person who enters that. Let them know which service you attended. Our prayer focus this week is for our country. Just keep it in your praise and continue to keep our world in your prayers too, especially Israel. Um, today, the Operation Christmas Child boxes are due in. If you forgot them, please, after the service, go home, pick them up, and come back. Because we need them tomorrow, because we've got to get them out to the place. And once we ship them out, we don't have any ability to do anything with them for a whole nother year. So if no one's here, just leave them in the front door. They're usually not a high theft item. So people see what they are. And we'll come, I'll come tonight and uh, see whatever's dropped off. But we do need them back today. So thank you for doing that. Our food donations for Thanksgiving baskets, the list is in the back. They're all due next Sunday. Uh, so thank you to so many who have already contributed so much food. It's going to be a blessing, again, to those families that are in need. Uh, tomorrow morning we have prayer. We meet over in that corner there at 8.30 in the morning. Anybody is welcome to come. We have a time of prayer time sharing. We have a time of corporate prayer, and then everybody breaks up for their individual prayer. So it's, it's a good time. So we meet on Monday at 8.30. And this Thursday, we have um, the Brevard County Schools solos and ensembles where they come in and they get their ratings. And they're going to be all over our church because they got to be in different parts of the church because we've got multiple ones going out of time. So this is a good day not to come to the church. <laughs> Because we don't want you walking into a room and disturbing somebody who's trying to be raided and things like that. They'll be in the sanctuary. They're going to be in the fellowship hall. They're going to be in the choir room. They may be in S11. They may be back there. They may be in the rock. So they're going to be everywhere. They won't be in the preschool, but yes. What day was it again? Thursday. This Thursday. Thank yes, this Thursday. And we let the prayer share and quilt group know that not to come. <laughs> so... That's this Thursday. It's always good. It's, I like to have a whole bunch of people come onto our campus, a lot of kids. I like them talking about. Usually we get good comments when they come onto our campus. So that's just a reminder that's happening this Thursday. On Sunday, November 19th, go ahead and put this on your calendar. We're going to do a Friendsgiving uh, right after the second service at noon. Uh, we'll have, we're going to provide the main course, which will be fowl, something like that. Chicken, I think. Huh? Roasted chicken. So we need to bring a side dish with that, and we'll kind of celebrate Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, the week before Thanksgiving. So it's a fun time. We did it last year, I think, and so all are invited. Uh, the service for Mary Luck is going to be on Tuesday. Mary passed away this uh, last week, and her service will be Tuesday at 1 p.m. They're going to have a time of greeting and visitation at noon, and then the service following at 1 uh, they're going to go right after the service. They'll be heading out to the graveside, and they've uh, catered a group to feed them out at the graveside the, in the Florida Memorial Gardens. They have a big room there where they can do that, so we're not providing the meal, anything like we normally do. But if you'd like to come and celebrate her life and be with the family, that's going to be Tuesday at 1 p.m. Wednesday is lunch and a movie. Uh, please, uh, are you coming to that? You're invited. That's for our senior ministry. And if you got your picture taken, the pictorial directories are in. If you got a picture taken, you get one. And so your name is on a directory back there in the back, so please pick them up. And after we see how many are left and we got a few extra, we can give those out to people who want a directory and need them. So thank you for all who got your pictures taken. And I think that's all my announcements. <laughs> so let us stand up and greet one another. Can't get over My name is registered in heaven 
just to serve you. Sometimes things get difficult on this earth, but we realize who's the King of King and Lord of Lord. You are majesty, and you control all the activities on this earth so that your people can see you in the changes. A lot of disturbances around this world, around this country, in our homes, families, whatever the issue may be, if we would turn to you, we can find peace that surpasses all understanding. So right now, Lord, we just want to focus on worshiping you. This is a moment where we can lay all our cares aside and just thank you for allowing us to be here just one more time. For our loved ones, family, friends that are far and near, we just want to say thank you. For those that are watching via the internet, we just want to say thank you for them. We bless your holy name and we thank you for guarding our lives so Satan will not harm us. So as we continue this worship service, we ask that any burdens that we carry be lifted and your name be praised. In the worthy name of Jesus, we do pray. Let everyone say together, amen. amen.
We now come to that time where we lift up our prayer requests. So let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we come here this morning grateful that we are your children. Grateful that you have received us as your loved ones. That you have made us co-heirs with Christ to receive all the benefits and glory you promised him in eternal life. So this morning, we just come to praise you, Abba, Father. We come to just empty ourselves of all the burdens we have to leave them at your foot because you said, come and bring them here, that you would handle them, you would wipe away the tears, you would restore the wrongs we endured and you would fill us with hope in this life and peace forever. So we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you give us. And Lord, as we come here this morning, we do lift up our nation, Lord, and we are a nation divided. It seems, Lord, like if we pick a subject, somebody else is going to pick the opposite side just to argue. And unfortunately, Lord, we believe that if someone disagrees with us, we can harm them. And you've called your church, Lord, to be witnesses of peace and love. And so, Lord, we lift up our nation to you and ask that you fill it with your spirit. But, Lord, fill your churches, fill this church with your power, your spirit, so that we might model what love looks like. We might model what love your neighbor looks like. That we might model what it means to love our enemies, to pray for our enemies. It's hard, Lord, but you have called us to do it and you have filled us with your spirit and the ability to do it. So, Lord, help us to be that witness to our country, to our state, to our community, to our neighbor, to our family. Lord, help us to be your witnesses and everywhere we go. And Lord, as we come here this morning, we also remember those that are hurting, those that need your healing, your strength, your peace, your restoration. And so, Lord, we lift up all of those that are on our prayer list, Touch them as only you can. Heal them. Restore them. And we even now, Lord, lift up to you that one name, that one request that is silent in our heart that we name before you now. And gracious Heavenly Father, I do lift up this congregation to you, this church, its ministry, its mission, and its vision. Lord, we want it all to align with you and your will, your ways, your purpose, and your power. So continue to be with those who have volunteered to be leaders and servants in this church. Continue to bless those who give of their time and their talents and give of themselves so that we can be your church in this community. Help us to let your light shine into this community, Lord. We know the only way we can do that is to be facing you and walking towards you so that we can reflect your light. And so help us to walk that way, Lord, in our own lives. Give each person here that, that sense of purpose. Reveal to them their purpose, their, the work that you have for them. Because, Lord, in that work, we find joy and peace. And we thank you that you've given us a work, that you call us to be co-laborers, in building your kingdom on earth. We thank you for that work. And Lord, we know it's all possible because of the death of Jesus Christ, his resurrection and his teaching. And so Lord, we now close this prayer in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we got one more thing before the kids go. This is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Day is actually November 1st. And October 31st is all Hallow's Eve, but everybody calls it Halloween. 
but it's actually All Hallows' Eve. It's the Eve before All Saints' Day. And it's on this day that we remember the saints who have gone on before us. And in this church, we remember those who have gone on to that glory since our last All Saints' Day. And we've had seven who have finished their course in life. And we want to remember them. And Mary Luck kind of decided she wanted to go on All Saints' Day, so she died on All Saints' Day. She held the family out for about five days because she wanted to pick that day. <laughs> but we remember them. And, and then you look at that list there, you see many years of service to this community and much love. And we miss them. But we know that they're at joy and at peace. And so let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we remember these seven saints, we thank you for their life that still continues in this church because their fingerprints are everywhere. Their love still fills this sanctuary, this facility, and touches the lives of many. Lord, we're thankful that you have received them into the blessed rest of everlasting life, into that glorious peace, that they are receiving that well earned rest. And Lord, for those of us who remain, help us to continue in the love they taught us. Help us as saints to continue on this journey towards your love, your perfection. We pray this in your son's most precious holy name. Amen. And at this time, our kids can head off to Children's Church where they'll have a good time and we'll continue here singing.
We come out of that time where we receive our tithes and offerings and we're placing them in the baskets in the back. If you haven't, you can do that on your way out. And October's giving was finally back up to our normal giving, but it wasn't tremendously over to make up for the deficit. It made up a little bit. I don't know how much because we don't have our expenses yet, but our, our giving was more than we projected for October. So thank you for those who stepped it up a little bit. Because um, going into October, we were at a shortfall of somewhere around $44,000 for the year. Um, I don't know what we made up on that, but um, I'm hoping we can, by the end of the year, make that up. If not, I trust God will make it up next year. Um, if not, it'd be, it'll be the first year in 27 years, I think, that my, didn't end the year in a surplus. <laughs> so these things come to us, but it's been trying times. But thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your support of this church because we do so much for this community. And without your tithes and offerings, we couldn't do what we did. We did receive good news that our apportionments are going down about $1,800 as from what they were last year. And we had projected them a little bit increase, so it's about a $2,500 savings now for our budget next year. So that's a little small blessings. And we'll take every small blessing we can get and I take every small blessing in my life I can get every day. So let us go to Lord in prayer. Grace Heavenly Father, once again, we come thankful for the many blessings you give us. And Lord, we know you are blessing us each and every day. And there are days that we don't acknowledge those blessings because we miss them. We don't see them. We walk right by them. But you continue to bless us because you love us. Because we are your children. And you want us to prosper. And we thank you for that. And so, Lord, now as we come to present just a portion of that blessing back to you in the form of these, our tithes and offerings, multiply them for your kingdom. Guide us in their use. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from one of those little letters in the back of the Bible, 1 John, the third chapter, beginning of the first verse. Hear now these words. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, 
When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purifies themselves, just as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, sometimes our children, when they come to us when they're young, they're being more serious than we expect at times. They're looking for answers sometimes, and we miss those. That is what this one mother missed about a question her son asked her one day. She said her son had been out playing for a long time and suddenly came in and asked her, who am I? Well, she assumed that he had been playing a game, and so she said, why, you're Superman. And his countenance just kind of got down. And he's just looked at it and he said, oh, Mom, the lady up the street was right. And she's wondering, what do you mean? See, what, what do you mean by that? He said, she said I was so dirty my own mom wouldn't even recognize me. <laughs> we can laugh at that. But in that moment, he was looking for affirmation that his mother would remember him, recognize him no matter how dirty he was. It was kind of a sign of knowing he was loved and loved deeply. He wanted that in that moment. And our scripture this morning comes from the first of three short letters in the back of the Bible that have been attributed to the Apostle John. The first letter uses a lot of the same imagery found in the Gospel of John, and that's why they think he wrote it. And it is a letter of encouragement to the people living under persecution. And we are in the middle of that letter, and John writes these wonderful words. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. It's interesting that in the New Testament, the phrase children of God is used nine times, and John uses it five of those times in this one letter. To be known as a child of someone is very important. And to be loved by that someone is everything. I love this story. Scott Essay's book, Ties That Bind, Stories of Love and Gratitude from the first 10 years of Story Corps. He has this story from the chapter called, We Saved Each Other. And it's the story of a love of a father. And I think it gives us a glimpse of what it means to be a child of God. The dad's name is Will Smith, not the Will Smith who's the actor. This Will Smith spells his first name W-I-L. And he was serving in the Navy when he learned that his girlfriend was pregnant. And four weeks after his daughter Olivia was born, he was deployed. And he didn't want to be away from his child for months at a time. So he resigned from the Navy and he enrolled in Bowden College at the age of 27. Well, Will had broken up with his girlfriend prior to his knowing that she was pregnant. And shortly after Olivia was born, Olivia's mother came to him and said, I can't handle her. I don't want to raise her. I don't want anything to do with her. So he took her while he's enrolled in college. She was only a baby, but he brought her to class with her. He brought her to work with him in a night job, and hid her in a closet while he cleaned offices. He was on the basketball team. And Olivia, I mean, and his college basketball teammates were Olivia's first babysitters. Real reports that taking care of Olivia gave him strength, and he was working to create a better life for her. And by the time he graduated from Bowden College, most of the students and faculty had witnessed the devoted love of this father for his daughter. So there was no surprise that when Will carried Olivia in his arms across the graduation that the dean announced not just Will Smith, but Will and Olivia Smith were receiving their degrees that day. But what surprised him was when the whole student body stood and gave him a standing ovation. And over the years, Olivia Smith never had to question her father's love for her. He built his life around raising her and providing for her, and she calls him her rock. And when Will Smith was diagnosed with colon cancer, Elysia does not hesitate to come home from college to take care of him. Sadly, Will passed away in 2015, 
but he left behind a legacy of love that will shape his daughter's identity for the rest of her life because she knew her father loved her. Olivia knew the power of a father's love. And that is something we need to know today. And last week I talked about how we need to truly understand who Jesus is in our lives if we want to share him, if we're going to find power in what he offers, and if we're going to go out in that power. We need to know who he is and believe it. But we also need to know who we are in that relationship with him. And scripture teaches us that we are children of God and thus co-heirs with Christ. We are family. In reading this week, I came across an article that talked about there are three ways that we become part of a family. The writer said you're either born into that family, you're adopted into that family, either formally or informally, or you marry into that family. Those are usually the three ways you get into a family. And for, when we look at Scripture, it touches on all three. Paul uses the image of adoption four different times in his letter. For Paul, he says, we were predestined to, to receive the adoption as children. And he says, we have received the spirit of adoption which causes us to cry out, Abba, Father. See, Paul was kind of hard. He, he looked on the adoption side because he never really thought of himself as an apostle, one being abnormally born. And for a lot of people, that's the way they look at adoption. They, they don't think it's quite real. But I love the way one boy put it. He was being teased at school for being adopted. And the other children were always making fun of him, always teasing him. And finally, he got to where he couldn't take it any longer one day. And as they were teasing him, he finally said to them, you can say whatever you want, all I know is my parents chose me, but they're stuck with you. <laughs> God chose us. God chose to send his son to die for us. And that is good news. And what we remember is that while God wants all to come to his love, not everyone does. So we see that while everyone on earth is a creation of God, not everyone is a child of God. Every person is made in God's image. This means that something of the essence of God is in each person, but only those who respond in faith to God's offer through Jesus Christ become a child of God. Every Christian is adopted child of God. But we're also born into this family. While Paul uses the image of adoption, John, who calls himself the beloved disciple, he says, no, we're born into this family. It is John who gives us the story of Jesus and Nicodemus about being born again. And in our letter we were reading this morning, John mentions nine times about being born of God. And while we're not physically born of children of God, which is a problem Nicodemus couldn't get through, because at birth we realize that sin stamps us at that birth as one separated from God. Now, if we die as a child, God receives us without question. But for those of us who grow to an age of reasoning, the moment we receive Christ as Savior, we are adopted as children of God. But then something else happens. To make the assurance doubly sure, God provides an actual birth, a new birth, a second birth. Through Jesus Christ, God adopts us as Jesus' brothers and sisters, and through the Holy Spirit, he gives us a new birth. Christians are both adopted and born as God's children. And because we receive, because when we receive Christ, we are born again into this new relationship with God as children and co-heirs of Christ. And even when we look at marriage, we see a hint that we come in through marriage. Because throughout Scripture, Jesus has used marriage as that image of what the relationship between us and God would be like. And we read that the church is the bride of Christ. And so when we become a believer, we become part of the church and we become the bride of Christ. And so we are also married into this family. But I think the strongest image of all of these is that we are children of God. And we're not just called children of God like the Old Testament talks about the children of Israel. No, this isn't just a name. 
I like what someone said. This is genealogy. This is pedigree. This is relationship. We are children of God, and we need to believe that because that's exactly who we are right now today. Not off in some long distant future, but right now, you are a child of God. Not next week, right now, you are a child of God. Not even tomorrow or later this afternoon, but right now, you are a child of God. And that cannot be taken from you. Your inheritance cannot be taken from you. Your eternal home cannot be taken from you. All that comes from being a child of God is yours today. And when we live that, people see it in us. They see the hope we have. And it can change people's lives when they seek it too. Today is All Saints Sunday. Today we remember those people who have gone before us, who have lived as children of God, and we learn from them, and we celebrate them. And we realize they were not perfect people, and none of us are but they are made perfect today for the day they received Christ when they were, where Christ received them in heaven. Notice how John writes, Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Saints of God are not perfect people in this world, though they will be made perfect when they come face to face with Christ. That is part of the inheritance we have been promised. And our problem when we tend to think of ourselves as saints is, how many of you think of yourself as a saint? Raise your hand. <laughs> All of you should think of yourself as, see, this is the problem the Catholic Church gave us. They have this thing that says, a saint has to rise above and let their light shine so bright that only these people that we vote on are saints. No, that is a wrong use of the term saint. We are all saints. It is clear in the Bible that the moment we accept Christ, we become saints. See, our sainthood isn't about what we do, what we have done, what we earned. It is by God's grace that we are a saint, which means we are in his family because he has nothing but saints in his family. And you're in his family. So you're a saint. Someone once noted in good Wesleyan theology, saints aren't perfect people. Saints are people who are being perfected by God. And we see that when Jesus chose the 12, he didn't chose the brightest and the best, the smartest or even that with the most money. He picked the mediocre, the everyday, the ordinary, even those estranged from the society, and then molded them into the extraordinary. That's what God does with his children. And God is our loving parent who wants us to live the best life possible. And contrary to what so many people who don't believe in God want to believe about God is he is not a helicopter parent. He is not there hovering over us to make sure nothing ever happens to us wrong and make sure everything goes right and anything stupid we do, he will fix immediately. That is not the God parent we have. We have a God who loves us as a parent, who teaches us and sends us out knowing we're going to mess up, knowing that bad things are going to happen to us. But he wants us to learn and grow through those experiences so that we can come back, learn, he can teach us and send us back out again. See, he knows we will have joys and tears. He knows we'll have successes and failures. But he will always be there helping us to grow in his grace and his love. And at the end of this race we run, he will be there to welcome us into that eternal place. Know this. Know this in your hearts. Know what it means to be a child of God. He is our rock, as Olivia said about her dad. Jesus is our rock. He's our Ebenezer. And you are that special to him. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we are children of God, your children, that you love us and you want the very best for us, and that you teach us and you prepare us to live this life. We thank you for your love and grace and peace. We thank you for, for the power you give us and we thank you for Jesus Christ, who will never leave us. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
And one of the ways that we remember God's love for us is through Holy Communion. Because we don't remember just that night, but we remember his whole life, his whole teaching. We remember that he died and rose again, and that he offers us that eternal life. And on that night before he gave himself up, when he gathered disciples one last time, he shared a meal with them. He taught them. He even sang a hymn with them. And he did one last thing. After supper was over, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks over it, and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which has been prepared for you and for many. I love that he added those few words, and for many. That's us sitting here today. He prayed for us that night. Those of us sitting there today, he prayed for us. And so we come to the table remembering that love. So let us pray. Very Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this never-ending love, because, Lord, we are your saints. Even though there are days we don't feel like saints because we didn't earn it. But you want us to know that we don't have to earn your love, that it is freely given. And that your love is freely giving. And your forgiveness is freely given. And even though, Lord, we have done the things that we shouldn't have done or didn't do the things we should have done, you forgive us. So let everyone here know that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And Lord, as we come to this, your table, make this bread and this juice be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with each other and one with you in ministry to the world till we feast together at that heavenly banquet. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite the musicians and the sound people to come forward. This morning, we're serving by intinction. If you do not wish to do intinction, we do have the little cups back there. So if you raise your hand, someone will bring them to you. The way we'll do that is the row in front of you just comes down there. They'll move in front of that table, go to the bread, then the juice, and you can either go to the side you're on or go around them to come back to whichever way they were so that we don't create a traffic jam. So all are welcome. All are invited to the table. Come.
Is there anybody that needs to be served in their seat? Sorry, just raise your hands and we'll come serve you. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you receive us at your table, that you bless us, that you fill us with your spirit. You fill us with your love. You fill us with your hope. You fill us with your joy. You fill us with your peace. You fill us with your power. You receive us as children of God. We thank you. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Don't forget, if you've got your directory picture taken, there's a directory for you back there. there you've got a label with your name on it. And as you prepare to leave, let us reach up and grab God's hand because he's going to walk with you all week long. So just go on this journey hand in hand with dad, your dad, your Abba Father, knowing that he will walk with you, he will guide with you, and he will be your rock and sustain you all your days. Go in his power. Amen.